story begins in June of 1561, in the bustling city of Cadiz on Spain's Atlantic coast. It is from here that many set out to brave the challenges of a new world, for it is said that beyond the Atlantic, fame and fortune awaits the fearless and the brave. It is this hope which one day leads a young man to embark on a long journey after a number of hapless years. But hope has a most powerful enemy, fate. And so it comes to pass that the ship is beset by a terrible storm, but a few days' journey from the new world. The storm damages the ship severely, and a huge wave sweeps the young man overboard. The next morning, he awakes, senses the fuddle, and all hope gone. But this time, fate proves gracious, for the accident took place on the busy trade route between St. Augustine and Port Royal. And so the young man, clinging to life at the last remains of his strength, is rescued by a Spanish merchant ship. Delighted that they were able to rescue a fellow countryman, the ship's sailors listen avidly to news from the home they have not seen in so long. An elderly passenger mingles with the sailors, and his eyes light up when he hears of the young man's origins, for he too is from Cadiz. His name is Pedro de Vega, and he is the Spanish Viceroy's commercial attaché. It is at his side that the young man enters the new world, breathing deeply of its heady scent. Here, his dream of a better life will be fulfilled, of that he is sure, and his newfound friend promises to help him along. Once again, allow me to welcome you to Port Royal, the seat of the Spanish Viceroy here in the New World. I will help you settle into your new city more quickly. I have had a small ship anchored in the harbour for you. You will find the city's most important buildings near the market square. Click them to perform different actions. There you will also find your first warehouse. I will get back to you once you've sold your first goods in another city. Welcome to Port Royal. This is your hometown for now, in which you already even own a warehouse. You can adjust the level of magnification and the camera angle at will. The city view shows all of the buildings in the city. These include action buildings, homes and businesses. At first, the action buildings are most important for you. They are always in the center of town. You can enter them to perform certain actions, such as here in the dock, the most important building. This is where all of the trading for the entire city is done. If you have a convoy in port, you can select it directly. This displays data on the convoy on the right. Note, convoys consist of one or more ships and have a captain. Uh, more on that later. To send your convoy out, you must first leave town and go to the nautical chart. Here all the cities you know are shown. You can adjust the area shown and zoom level just the same as in the city. Select a destination city for your convoy and then select send convoy here. Now you can see which route your convoy will take. If you have nothing else to do, you can also speed up time. Once your convoy has arrived in another city, you can then trade there. You can either enter the city or trade directly between the city and your selected convoy. In the trading window, the goods on board your convoy are displayed on the right. In order to sell them, select the goods and move the slider towards the city. Then confirm the trade. I will explain the significance of the prices and quantities displayed later. As you can see, business with us can be good indeed.
Good. Now you know how to earn gold through trading. No matter which path you follow later, never forget that you must keep an eye on prices. Don't worry, you will find that it soon becomes very easy. And that's important because you will need a lot of gold if you want to achieve a higher rank. Higher ranks open an entire host of new possibilities. I leave you alone for a while now as I have an interview with the Viceroy. I'll be back soon.
Good, that's done. Now we come to ships and convoys. Here you have to remember, single ships have no crews and therefore cannot be sent out. To use a ship, you must either convert it into a convoy or add it to an existing convoy. It then automatically receives a mandatory basic crew. By the way, only one captain is required per convoy, and his skills can improve over time. Now for something completely different. Elena, the daughter of the Spanish Viceroy, has a diplomatic mission to New Orleans. The tensions between France and Spain require that she travel as inconspicuously as possible. I therefore suggested to the Viceroy that you would provide her passage. She will board your convoy secretly, which should protect her from potential adversaries. At the beginning of the game, only a few cities are displayed on the chart. You can discover other cities by approaching them with a convoy. The city symbol itself gives an indication of the city's size. It also shows the commodity the city currently needs most. Special events in the city are also displayed on the chart. You can view all of the information by opening the city information. It belongs to the dockyard building, which you already know from the trade window. Even if you cannot enter a city because you have neither warehouse nor convoy there, you can still open the city information from the marine chart. The city information tells you everything you need to know about a city. The most important factors are nation, population, the commodities producible in the city, and the city type. The latter indicates whether the city is a simple colonial city or home to a governor or viceroy of that nation. This has implications for the city's size, its defense, and its demands for commodities. The reputation that you have with the city's nation has the following effect. If your reputation is less than 25%, the nation will view you as an enemy. That will happen, for example, if you attack their convoys. Then you should be wary of their military convoys. As you've already determined, four nations are represented in the Caribbean. Spain, England, France, and Holland. Your reputation with each of these four nations will always be shown here. Also shown here is the current relationship of the nations to one another. A nation can either be neutral to all other nations, at war with, or allied to another nation. Relationships between nations are not irrelevant for you. However, they will only play a role when you act for or against a nation and have acquired a letter of mark against a different nation from a viceroy. All that is important at the start is ensuring your reputation in a nation does not fall below 25% and that the military convoys of nations at war are constantly fighting one another. You can enhance your reputation in a nation only by accepting and fulfilling assignments for an administrator, governor, or viceroy of that nation. These assignments are offered in the city palace, but you need a certain rank to accept them. One more thing about the chart. Each maritime area is associated with a particular power. The flag and its intensity shows you which power has the greatest fighting strength here. Normally, cities and maritime regions belong to the same nation, as that nation's military convoys will be patrolling the area. Things become interesting when the city and the maritime region belong to different nations, because then the city might just come under attack.
It sounded like a simple, easy trip to New Orleans, conducting a young woman to a diplomatic meeting. Yet, she does not like the fact that she has to travel with commoners to remain undetected. And she is also unhappy as she suspects the real reason for her meeting with the French Viceroy is simply a chance for him to present his son. The young captain notices her anger and tries to cheer her up, at first in vain, but eventually she laughs, and her radiant eyes burn themselves into his soul. But then she thinks of her mission, and the fact that it is unseemly for a woman of her station to give a common sailor any more attention than is absolutely necessary. And yet, that moment is all it takes for a young man to fall in love with a young woman. Excellent! You've discovered a new city, and Elena arrived safely in New Orleans. We can only hope that her mission is successful, and that relations between France and Spain soon improve. She will stay a while before returning home later with another convoy. Well, you've learned the basics. How it goes from here depends on which path you have chosen. A young man tormented by the thought of Elena, being forever out of his reach. Even if their paths were to cross again at some point, why should she give him more than a passing glance? After all, he is just a nobody. His chain of thought is interrupted by an excited discussion at the next table. Two captains are wondering what happened to the daughter of the Spanish Viceroy. She had boarded a ship for the return voyage after her diplomatic mission in New Orleans, but the ship was never seen again. Admiral de Mendoza, Elena's uncle, is beside himself with rage and determined to move heaven and earth to find her. The young man is upset, but he makes his decision. He will save Elena. If he can convince the Viceroy that he will stop at nothing, the Viceroy will give him the chance. Of that he is sure. He painstakingly prepares himself for a perfect audience. Pedro the Vega gets him a brief audience. Elena's father is devastated, but he draws hope from the unknown young man's self-confidence. The Viceroy sees that the young man is acting not just out of duty, and thus knows that he will not give up until Elena has been saved. So, you are the one who will help us find Elena. Well enough, you've convinced the Viceroy, and I'm sure we can use all the help we can get. First, we have to get you prepared for the search. Here is some gold and some ships. Form the ships into a convoy and hire...